This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Yo ho, yo ho, what's pirate's life for me? We pillage, we plunder, we uh, drink a lot, drink up, me hearties, yo ho. I don't remember all the words, I just like the songs. Yeah, sorry. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Vaughn back here with another episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. In the last episode, we escaped the Hong Kong Prefect facility with our selves intact, with Key as an ally, and now we know that uh, Crate is aware of us, so we're going to have to take the information from Lamb's PDA and see if we can uh, use this to our advantage. And now we're on the Bentang, or whatever, uh, the ship of the pirates that uh, Jomo works, works with, so we're here temporarily until we can... Uh, Deal with our situation. So let's talk to the rest of the people and then get on with the with the story. What is it, Cooking Woman? Happy Woman. You're probably another uh, uh, Kickstarter backer, I bet, or someone who worked on the game. A woman in an armored trench coat hunches over a smoking grill. Her assault rifle leaned up against a nearby crate. She prods at an assortment of rapidly blackening fish, eels, squid, and other sea life, all the while fixing them with a critical glare. She glances up and squints at you as you approach. Uh, you're not a prisoner, and you don't look like a pirate, and this sure as hell ain't a standard tourist destination. Welcome to the Bang Tang, whoever you are. It's the finest pirate barge in at least 50 mile radius. You don't look like much of a pirate either. I'm not. I'm a mercenary. The name's Chastity Blackwell. The jo Joho Loa are letting me stay here between jobs because I've done some work for them in the past. I don't get shot out out here, and a lot of potential clients come to visit Tama. It's a better deal than I usually get. Why are you cooking all that fish? That's a lot of fish. Because you Tama's cooks, if you call them that, are goddamn atrocious. I've eaten prison food in Ulan Batar and that tasted better. Words to the wise, unless you want to eat sledge that looks like it was poured from a septic tank, you're going to have to cook your own meals out here. Trust me, it's worth it. Why doesn't Utama have better cooks? Honestly, I don't know. A good cook will make or break morale. Anyone who's ever served on a ship knows that. I can only assume that Rodali is really is really good at something else. From what I hear, he used to be a targeting officer on a Rebel HUK missile cruiser. Maybe he's the guy they, that set up the Ben Tang's defensive parameter. I'm not sure. Still, you think that a bunch of damn Filipino and Indonesian pirates suck a half-decent spice cabinet, but no. It's all pre-packaged special uh, spices mixed with scrounged from instant noodle packages. I'd have killed for some sambal Olek a month ago after Randali tried to make some Burbank go ring using fast food chili packets. They finally let me uh, go ashore for supplies. What do you know about Joho Lawa? Quite a bit. They're pirates. They live around Hong Kong and Jomo's only slightly crazier than most of them. What else is there to know? Sorry, sonny. Uh, sorry, sorry. I assume you're interested in something in particular. How'd they get started? They were Filipino refugees mostly. Two clans, the Joho and Lowa, resisted the Japanese occupation of the Philippines. Some joined the HUK rebels, but most decided to join the Hakka fishing communities around Hong Kong. Over the years, they intermarried, at least with each other, and then with the Chinese, Indonesians, and Malaysians as well. The whole venture is pretty much a family affair. Gross. Each ship tends to be run along family lines. The captain is the family elder, backed up by their spouse as first mate. The elder child, sometimes sibling, is the bosun and kids are the deckhands. It seems to work out well. It's basically just a family business and the fleet of ships are extended family, so they had kids just up for free labor. Gotcha. Chesty gestures towards the expanse of the Bentang, smiles crookedly. Because of that, they're united, but independent. Take the Bentang, for example. It just isn't Utama's ship. It's her family, her house, her business, and her legacy to pass on to her children. That's part of why they don't like stand-up fights as much as they do hit-and-run jobs. Nobody wants to get their family killed where they operate. They'll go anywhere in the South China Sea. I've heard stories they get as far as uh, Hangzhou sometimes. It makes run down to Dar Darwin, if the cargo's right. But in terms of their home base, it's been in Sai Kung for over 10 years. They're 100% Hong Kong natives, even if some of the locals don't seem to think so. Chesty grins crookedly. I guess that's part of why I like them so much. They're the kind of mixed up, multinational family that makes the modern world so interesting. Their only nation is their fleet, and their language, a mix up of Indonesian, Cantonese, ta Tagalog, Malay, Spanish, and English. They're beholden to no one but themselves. That's an emerald thing in this day and age. What's a pirate's life like? Is it for me? Chesty frowns, glancing at you in a sidelong fashion. Are you asking me and not Jomo? You know better than you know me, and I only know what I see from the outside. I mean, I guess I know more about them than most people. She sighs and shrugs. Okay, well, I guess the first thing to know is that it isn't as glamorous as they make it out to be. No pirates of the Caribbean. 
Actually, even then, that was a pretty dangerous movie, so, yeah. Nothing as clean cut as that. Most of the Joho Lilwa ships are living high in the mouth. They don't have any savings, and they can wind up stranded if something breaks down at sea. It's mostly a lot of sailing around, bribing harbor masters to find out what ships are carrying the good stuff, and then running off to steal it. Steal it all. Some pirates show up with big guns. This family would rather do it with a fast hit and run. Sure, they've got big guns, but they only use them as a last resort. Ammo costs money, you know. Let's talk about something else. How'd you get into cooking? Are you kidding me? Chastity smirks, folding her arms over her chest. After a minute, she smirks. Her smirk fades. Oh, you're serious. Okay, so basically, there are three types of mercenaries. She lifts a hand and starts counting off on her fingers. The first type are the ones who work for big outfits like MET 2000, Bright Blades, Tsunami, or whatever. They're not much different from corporate armies in a lot of ways. They've got tons of supportive finances, so everywhere they go, they build bases with mess halls, barracks, the works. Second, you've got small units who sign up with well-established clients. They don't work for a big PMC, but maybe they've got a team of 50 or so. They get got contracts from reasonable, lucrative clients and a lot of work in Africa for corporations or urban convoy duty in areas that are still a bit iffy. Places like Caracas, Vladivostovska, Logos, and whatever. These units rough it up a bit more, but they're usually attached to a lar larger group as extra muscle. Then you've got people like me, true freelancers, cowboys, like space cowboys? We'll fill out the gaps in large units, but we can never tell how big a group will be with something. Uh, sometimes a corporation needs some soldiers garrisoned at some mine, and they round up ten or of us and throw us out there in the field with nothing but what we brought with us. Unless you have some kind of unhealthy love for field rations, you learn to cook whatever you got around, or you make friends with someone who does. Why hang out on a boat rather than a safe house? I like boats. I like sailors. Chastity shrugs. I spend a lot of time as hired muscle on everything from drones to containers ships to small smuggling vessels. Most of those small boats were in uh, the Aegean, though. Quick runs between small islands. Shit, I remember this one time. Chesty suddenly starts snickering to herself. The snicker becomes a chuckle, and the chuckle eventually turns to a roaring laugh as she doubles over, clutching her sides. Hey, come on, the Greeks aren't that funny. Chesty begins coughing in an effort to catch her breath. Sorry, I just... She gestures excitedly towards the grill with one hand. The fish... Finally pulling herself together, the mercenary stands up and takes a long, deep breath, wiping a tear from her eye. She launches into a story. Okay, so this one time I was out on a fishing boat, but the skipper was actually running guns and missiles to Bar Bari, right? Not much danger out there, aside from other gun runners and pirates, so we're taking it slow. A nice warm summer cruise. I've been amusing myself by fishing while I kept watch. I got a tug on my line and I reeled in this amazing gilt head sea bream. It was beautiful and a good t 10 kilos. She stares off into the distance, shaking her head in disbelief. I knew right then that, that it's what we were having for dinner that night. Doesn't seem such fun, uh, such a funny story so far. One of the other marks on the boat was this elf pistol adept, fastidious guy, liked this fine wine and food. Anyway, he sl slides up and asks what I'm doing with it. What do you think I'm going to? Uh, what do you think I'm going to do with it? I say, I'm going to grill it up with some olive oil, lemons, and garlic. You know, standard Greek style stuff. Well, the elf gets a good look like I slapped his mother. He just screws his face up into a sneer and asks what the hell is wrong with me. Ask him how he'd do it. You have to you have to poach a fish like that, lay down a bed of pilaf rice, zucchini, bell peppers, and onions. You cook a slow foil with a touch of wine. Only a barbarian would grill it, he says to me. Chesty dip, drip, dips her head, grinning. That wasn't something I was prepared to hear. I explained to him that to preserve the fish's natural flavor, grilling was the superior choice. I might have suggested he had delusions of our aristocracy. He countered that his method would create a superior flavor profile overall, as well as be a complete meal. In question if my mother had been a goat, and my father a chimpanzee. And your father smelt of elderberries! That went on until we had his colt manhunter's barrel halfway into my mouth and my combat knife was uh, pressed up against his trachea. We would have kept our argument too if the first mate hadn't doused us with a fire hose. Chester grins at you expectantly. All this over how to cook a fish? Hey, I don't know that, what it's like where you're from, pal, but in my books, dinner's is very serious business. Anyway, you got blasted with a fire hose, and the fire uh, fish got blasted through a scrubber back out to sea, so the whole argument wound up sort of fizzling out. I think that we ended up having spam and eggs instead. See ya. <clears throat> but, but a funny, what a fascinating story. I loved it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Not really. With an easy smile and a relatively uh, relaxed body language, something about this orc seems intrinsically pleasant, despite the myriad guns and swords laying on the table near him. 
He raises a hand in greetings as you approach. Hey, stranger. Always nice to see a new face out here. Uh, what are you, the official ship's greeter? The orc cackles, gesturing down the deck. I think those points, uh, point defense cannons are the real greeters around here. Nobody wants to show up uninvited to this barge. The name's Garrick. I'm not part of the crew, just a freelance swordsman. Swordsman in an age of guns. Yeah, that sounds legit. So you're running or something? Something like that. The more appropriate term in Hong Kong would be, yeah, hop. But same difference. Greek shrugs. You boil it down, I'm just a street samurai who happens to be good with a blade. Guns too, but I like swords. Where are you from? Garrick doesn't sound like a Chinese name. I grew up on the streets of Oakland, California, Free State. You know, Orkland. Garrick gestures towards his uh, two tusks, grinning. Non-humans weren't very welcome in San Francisco after Japan began protecting it. Anybody who wasn't highly connected or a normal human got shoved out. I'm sure you've run into somebody with an axe to grind against dwarves at some point in your life. Think of that, but make, make it the law. Now imagine that those thugs who are getting up in your face think you're a monster, you're going to kill their kids. I think he has something, except for humans. Uh, I forgot what his dialogue is, if you're human. It's been forever since I've played that, but, but that, that line is slightly different. Long story short, they marched us out at gunpoint. It happens right before I was born, but I heard a lot of stories. What's the California Free State like these days? Kind of like a pile of crap. Like in real life. Uh, <laughs> San Francisco is all wrapped up by the Japanese Megas. Their playground, basically. Los Angeles is an independent city-state. When your biggest claim to power and fame are Sacramento and Ventura, you know you're really scraping the barrel. I don't miss it. Not one bit. How'd you end up in Hong Kong? Garrick snaps his fingers excitedly. Ah! This time, in a, in a, uh, this dies into my tragic past. What are you, a D and D gamer? A tale of revenge at foreign lands, swords and sorcery, of dead parents in the criminal underworld. I knew it. You're awfully excited about a terrible event. Well, what do you expect? It happened when I was a kid, and that was ages ago. I lived in a slum surrounded by gangers and junkies. Objectively speaking, it was probably the best thing that happened to me. It got me out of Orkland. I've gone, I'd have gone to the corner store, when I got home, my home was on fire. Mom and Dad had been hacked up with a machete. Don't know why. Maybe a BTL debt. Maybe they just got on the wrong side of one of the local gangs. Long story short, a local fixer felt bad and took me in. Started me off as an assistant and moved me out to be his muscle as I got older. <coughs> Sounds like a familiar story to me. Figured it might. People like us, we tend to come up from the same kind of places. Nobody gives up an easy street for a life of crime unless they're seriously screwed up in the head. But it's a better life than begging or being at the bottom of the food chain, yeah? Anyway, once I was old enough, Big Sven, this fixer, hooked me up with uh, my troy leaf uh, foot Sifu. That was when I got my first street chops, odd jobs here and there. And I'm not an adept, so I've had to scrounge and saw whatever wear I could afford. I'm out there because my Sifu figured it was time for me to learn from the other masters. I've been visiting monks and tried enforcers at back alley schools for months now. Are you looking to avenge your parents? I guess if it comes up or if I hear something. Seems like the kind of thing I should be honor bound to do, but it was so damn long ago I figured I could afford to let it sit a bit longer. Or the person could be dead, or like I said, could have been a ganger that's already been shot and killed, so... Garrick shrugs, spreading his arms helplessly. Maybe that's kind of weird, but I don't want that part of my past to define me. Yeah. How'd you get into the whole wandering swordsman thing? Seems a bit melodramatic. I grew up on stories about wandering uh, Zhanggu swordsmen and other martial artists. I loved reading books about the water margin, the deer, the cauldron, and the journey to the west. There's a kind of romance that uh, appealed to me. It still does. An outlaw living by their own code, fighting the mighty powers, living by their own wits. It beats the usual story, I knew. Poor being more poor, starve, die poor. Garrick gestures off towards the distance. Most people out there haven't got a shred of hope and that there's, a that there's anything better. When you live like that, it grinds you down. I figured if I could see my life as a modern version of one of those classics, I'll, it'll keep my spirits up. That's worth more to me than all the new yin in the world. See you later, Garrick. Hope you find who you're looking for. Hey, thanks. If it happens, it happens. If not, at least I'll have an interesting trip. That's the thing, really. Be where you are, live where you are. Makes sense? <coughs> not even a little. All right, let's see how the constable Hui is doing. The constable's attention is locked into his PDA display. He inhales through his nose and speaks. Just because I'm standing here doesn't mean I'm not busy. 
He shrugs, his tattoos move with the rise and fall of the shoulders. State your business. So how'd you wind up on this task force? My cover got blown, barely made a 444 territory alive. I couldn't stand to cover any longer, so they had to find another use for me. When Lamb told me about the task force, I volunteered. Oh, I think this is... I guess it's repeated dialogue, because I think I remember talking to this guy. Uh, I'll, I'll do it again, just to see. What do you do when you're not being a cop? What do I do? You mean like my hobbies? That's kind of a strange thing to ask. I guess it might be. I would just like to get to know the people I'm working with. He shrugs. Okay, sure. I paint. Oils. Mostly in landscapes. I've had a few showings at Victoria Harbor coffee shops. Can we change the subject? Maybe this is getting a little too personal for my taste. Nice neck tattoo. Were you a ganger before you became a cop? Yeah, I got jumped in when I was a kid in my old neighborhood. It was impossible not to be. I got out when I was a teenager to turn my life around. When I was when I landed in the HKPF, they put my background to good use by sending me undercover. You are an arc. Yep, I worked undercover for a couple of Kowloon City's nastier street gangs, the Black Butchers and the 444s. Helped to bring down, them down from the inside. Glad to be off that detail. I was good at it, but doing that sort of work takes its toll. I have to go. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, I could see that just, you know, living the fake life over and over and over again. You're like, uh, oh, man. You might get involved in it. You might get too, too uh, wrapped up into that group, forgetting your original mission, that type of thing. The sergeant takes a long drag of a cigarette before meeting your gaze. He looks preoccupied with something. So here you are. She closes her eyes and allows the smoke to spill from her lips. When she opens them again, they're on you. What brings you to my corner of the yard, Renner? Uh. Thought that you could help me get my bearings here. Now that's a shock. Now that the shock's worn off, you got questions, huh? She chaps her cig uh, taps her cigarette, spilling ash to the ground. All right, tell me what you want to know. So how'd you wind up on this gig? Thanks for getting stale back in the office. She grabs her nose and gives it a, snort, a short rub, sniffs. Actually, they've been stale for a few years. I need it out, out of the that lifeless recycled air, the constant sound of typing fingers and the suffocating stench of cologne. She looks like she might gag. I could smell my old boss coming from down the hall. Eh, sounds delightful. Let me tell you, the stench of the harbor of Lowtown is worlds better than the odor in that office. This assignment has been a huge relief to my senses. But who knows, maybe one day I'll miss it. Nostalgia or whatever. What do you do when you're not being a cop? It's hard to clock out once you've got your badge. A lot of rookies don't deal, uh, don't realize that it's a 24-7 lifestyle. The better you get, the more it engulfs you. Lei Young taps her cigarette. A small clump of glowing ash hits the ground. It's like a radar that won't turn off, or a sixth sense or whatever. She rolls a small stick between her fingers. Point is, I don't get any free time. None, nah, I don't believe it. Even I can find time to take it easy. You want to know what I do in my free time? I sleep, I eat, and if I'm a new case, I, I sometimes try to get ahead of my, on my research. The only breaks that cops like me get, try to uh, really get to take are the ones that come when our superior officers force us to go on holiday. Well, that's the start. What do you do on holiday? She puts a uh, cigarette in her, to her mouth. The smoke steams out of her nose. More of the same, naturally. I have to go. Back to it. Uh, yeah, what an interesting character you are. Love it. Anyway, let's talk to this pirate. A bored-looking pirate stands amidst a collection of sea mines, a spiral-bound laminated manual in one hand. The cover reads, Ares MK-62 Naval Mine. He's busy thumbing through it, a sour expression on his face. Ah, it's that guy from before. Hey, you need something? The pirate tosses the manual to the ground near him. Do you really need a manual for sea mines? It doesn't inspire confidence. Hey friend, I've got to deal with over 30 different types of mines, demolition charges, warheads, and bombs, and each one's been brought second hand from a variety of security agencies, corporations, and governments. So you have to pardon me if I like to make absolutely certain that I'm following the right steps. The alternative is turning this tub into a smoking wreck. The pirate jerks a thumb towards the mines. The only reason that the Bintang and other ships are safe is that we've got enough explosives to level a small island. With that, we'd be fighting off other pirates left and right. Mines are the pirate's code for don't even think about it. You got a name? Call me Tef. Not my real name, obviously, but that should be uh, that should be surprised. You? You can call me Wiggles. Tef nods in satisfaction. A good name, I think. Nice to meet you. Why are you on mine prep duty? Simple. I spent 12 years with the British Royal Navy as an explosives ordnance disposal technician. If it if it explodes, I I know how to set it up or get rid of it. I wouldn't trust anyone else out here to handle them. That's for damn sure. No one else is trained. How'd you know being a pirate? Habit sets mostly. You know what being an EOD tech teaches you to do in the real world? Absolutely nothing. There's not a lot of call for bomb disposal outside of the police, and after my tour of duty was up in the Navy, I had enough of following orders. 
After 12 years with Her Majesty's salty service, my main, my main aim was to get drunk and forget all about being a sailor. I packed my kit and went around the world. Ended up in Manila, half dead of alcoholism, and met a local girl named Christina. It got serious. She introduced me to her family. It turned out they were pirates. After we got married, I figured I might as well make myself useful. So here we are, priming minds. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? You like know, it here? Well, I guess nothing to do with it. These pirates are my family, so I gotta stick by them. No, not necessarily. But yeah, I guess I do. I'd rather be on a bench with a bottle of whiskey, and I can sail to a beach, and we've got whiskey in the hold. Nobody's asking me to get shot at, and we're prosperous enough to feed ourselves. It's not a bad life, all things considered. Besides, I don't know how to do anything else aside from set up and disarm explosives. Not exactly a normal job. Eh, would you give it up if you could have a normal life? I don't know, maybe. Hard to say. It's like this. I've spent as long, so long as a sailor that I don't know what I'd do if, it, if I wasn't on a boat surrounded by bombs. Kind of messed up when I say it out loud, but that's the truth of it. See you later. Same to you. Stay the same. Yeah, let's see what else anyone else is uh, available to talk. There's someone over there! We must run to them! I must chat with you. It is required by RPG standards. Everyone must be chatted with at least once. Triple Alpha. A powerfully built woman stands by one of the huge guns, smoking a cigarette. She's carrying a cyber deck and an assault rifle is slung alongside it. She has the wide-eyed alertness of someone who's either supernaturally hyper-aware or has a lot of headwear. Her stance is easy and relaxed. It is the posture of someone who's ready to fight or flee at a moment's notice, but doesn't expect that she'll have to. The woman nods her head at you, taking a drag on her cigarette. You must be Wiggles. Heard that about that dust up at the Tiger's Den. Glad to see your god out alive. Uh, yeah, me too. You work with the Tom and her crew? Ah, uh, first time here. I'm just waiting for the rest of my crew to show up. The woman looks you up and down. You look like some. Uh, you look like I thought you would. Heard some stories about that business with Josephine saying. You can call me Triple Alpha, by the way. Alpha, Alpha, Alpha. What are you in a uh, college uh, college fraternity or something? Uh. Or fraternity, sorority, whatever. Uh, yeah, it'd be sorority. Us old runners, we gotta stick together, you know. You stand by your crew, they stand by you, and you can count. And you can't count on anyone else. She purses her lips, looking around with an annoyed expression. I should, I should tell you about the story about the the Decker and uh, his, uh, that that crew, and just how that worked out. <laughs> if my crew would ever freaking get here, why am I always the first one on the scene anyway? I want to get out of the shadow and onto a beach. You look like you've seen a lot of action yourself. Alpha lets out a rough cackle. Man, you don't know the half of it. You tally up the uh, runs I've been on. I think I might have seen more stuff than even Fast Jack. Uh, Fast Jack's supposed to be like one of the most famous uh, Shadowrunners in Shadow the Shadowrun setting. There's like a handful of them. I don't Fast Jack's one of them. I'm trying to remember the other handful. It's been forever since I've cracked open a Shadowrun book, but he's one of them. Uh, one of the famous ones, you know. I think I might not be as old as him, but I think I, I, that I take jobs a lot more frequently than he does. I've been to Los Angeles and Seattle, Hong Kong and Berlin, and everywhere in between. If it's a weapon, I fired it. If, if, <laughs> if it's a weapon, I fired it. If there's a corporation, I've run uh, both for and against it. The woman gestures languidly with her cigarette as she speaks. It's never dull, I tell you that. As far as I'm aware, I've never heard of this character in the book, so obviously made for the game. So, uh, the only time they ever brought in a character from an old, uh, from outside, uh, from the books or whatever, and even then, that wasn't really that. Was uh, Jake from? Uh, when they made Shadowrun's Returns, they brought in Jake from those games, but they never brought in anyone famous from... I don't think they had the license to use any... They could say names, but they couldn't actually bring in the characters for the games, which is kind of a drop, a drop of the ball when you think about it. I mean, that would have been a nice thing for those who played the Shadowrun. They're like, oh, it's this character. He's here. Maybe they don't affect the story too much. But, you know, anyway. Uh, how big of a team do you have? You got a rugger... Or a rigger, a mage, and an adept. I guess there's also a jack of all trades too. She's not very, really very good at anything, but she's got a lot of heart. Totally unafraid to march alongside us, even if all she can manage is to plink away with that crappy pistol of hers. And then there's me. You can guess what I do. Alpha gestures to the cyber deck and the assault rifle slung across her back. Why let your friends tag along if she's not good at anything? Moral, moral mostly. She's younger than the rest of us and hasn't been sinless as long. We got to, uh, we go to her if we need a more down-to-earth opinion on things. Are right, you staying out of the shadows for good? Alpha shakes her head and sh stares off into the distance. No, I don't think so. I've been running the shadows for my whole life. It's all I've ever done. I don't know how to do anything else. This is more of a vacation. A break, if you will. I figure if we take a break, hit some beaches, take in the sites that are off the beaten path, and come back when we're rested, you keep doing the same thing forever. You're bound to burn out. Alpha glances sidelong at you and gives a little grin. 
He must get quit paid quite a lot to be able to take this much time off. She grins and shrugs sheepishly. I don't want to brag, but I'm kind of rolling the money, yeah. It's a little bittersweet, I guess. Not sure how long we're going to be out, out, out of the life. It'll be a few years at least. A lot of our gear and cyberware is getting old, and it's hard to keep up with other runners out there. That kind of upgrade takes time, you know. Not only do you have to track down the new stuff, you have to recuperate and all that. Pretty sure we'll all be back, though, and when we are. She makes a little whistle and grins widely. Better watch out, because we'll be on top of the line. Except, you know, living this long and being a Shadowrunner is rare in the Shadowrun world. Usually most of them die young, so maybe you should get out while you're ahead. So what are you going to do once you're out? Aside from hit a nice beach somewhere, I don't know, there's plenty of interesting stuff to see around the world. She takes a drag on her cigarette and ponders the question. I want to see some old ruins, you know, temples, castles, stuff like that. I like history, so I'm always excited when I get to go to older cities like Rome or Athens. Heck, with as much money as I've got, maybe I'll take a trip into space and play tourists there, too. Never been to space before. See you later, Alpha. Hey, take care of yourself, okay? It's a rough world out there. Nobody's going to look out for you except your, your crew and yourself. I like your style. kind of feels like we've seen the same kind of runs, so watch your back, okay? She takes a long drag of her cigarette and flicks the butt away before lighting a new one. Those things will kill you, you know. She chuckles. Maybe they will, but scary things have tried and failed, so I'm feeling pretty okay with this one, Vice. She touches two fingers to her brow with a sly salute. Good luck. I think we might run into each other again after I've gotten upgraded and taken a bit of a break. Looking forward to it when it happens. That's a lie. Uh, this is the only game in the series. They didn't, uh, and obviously main characters don't, uh, don't come back to other games because that's their story here. And they're sticking to it. And, uh, forgot what else was I was going to say. Uh... Oh, anyway. Now let's see what the quartermaster has to offer. Uh, back for more gear. Back for more gear. You've got the scratch. I could hook you up. It's the same guy from before, by the way. Uh, I think he just got the same dialogue from before. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for some reason they don't give him a new dialogue, even though he's meeting us here after what happened. So you think you have some unique dialogue. We're like, oh, glad you survived all that. You know, but nope. So, all right, and I think uh, I think when it comes to firearms, I think he's got basically the same thing now. Yeah, so we could sell all that gear I got from before. Yeah, it seems like I mean I like this game, but it seems like they dropped the ball in a lot of situations here. I don't know, it's just, is it just me or not? All right, let's see how our allies are doing before we uh, talk to the commander. See if they see what's going on in the BBS and all that. By the way, this is probably going to be a non-action episode for those who are aware, because you know we've only got one ep or one episode. Maybe t it might take me two episodes, but we've got only got one more mission left, and that's the end of the game. So, well, everything seems to be more or less in one piece. Do you and Key got anything figured out? More to the point, do you know who we're fighting yet? Not yet. She wants me to meet her to go over what we have. Might as well get to it then, because we've got nothing. Oh, and Pykel, hurry! These choppy waters are doing a number on my stomach, and I'm fresh out of Dramamine. All right. Hey, uh, welcome back. You uh, find anything to use? Nope. So we have to wait till we do that before we do that. Okay. Well, let's see what there's anything here more going on. So unread messages. One. Oh, the recap. Uh. Oh yeah, it's the same as before. I don't know why this one won't disappear. Oh, right, now it's disappearing. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't think we have anything on. See if the BBS has anything new right now. Okay. Looking for milk run. Experienced Decker and fresh faced team of writers looking for basic run. Subcontract your dullest jobs to us. Preferred. No jobs involving experimental stems, secret chem labs, escapes on mopeds, the walled city, underwater pipes, or ferrets. Just to be on the safe side. Message me. Uh, SJ, when taking on your dullest jobs make this milk run a bit too uh, milky? For this team? Nah. No, just this once, and I know that sounds crazy, so hear me out. I want to go on a run where half the team doesn't get riddled with bullets or dissolved in acid or fed into a giant meat grinder. Call me crazy, but I think it'd be a nice change of pace. Hey, SG, I've got a uh, mission that I could probably throw your way. It requires some discreet sewer dredging below a knight's errant facility. Security should be lax, and the stories about awakened crocodiles down there are probably just urban legends. You guys want in? Yes, perfect. Uh, GC, I don't think our, par uh, our partnership is going to work out. <laughs> Uh, where's Pinky Swear? Hello, Shadows. I'm trying to relocate Pinky Swear. Last we heard, uh, last we heard, our paranoid friend was freaking out over robot ants, but it's been quite some time since we spoke. Truth be told, I'm getting genuinely worried. Any tips? Welcome. 
Yeah, about that haiku stalking. You got something? Spit it up. Well, uh, it wasn't Jibot or Codex or whatever the Matrix rumor mill seems to believe. Jackie, as in with a J? I was thinking Phil and I know what you're about to tell me. Yeah, it was me. P uh, after Pinky and I split up, Pinky never changed the door codes. When I figured that out, I thought I'd just, you know, play a harmless prank. You got a funny definition of harmless. She's probably in the middle of a psychotic break running through the hills to escape a bunch of imaginary poetry ants. Well, if she's gone, we could raid her apartment. She's got a load of, loads of great gear, and she was probably too busy panicking to change the codes. Again. Fuck it, count me in. <laughs> Jeez. Eh, some stories never change. Okay, let's go get the mission objective and then talk to our allies. Alright, let's see what this is all about. What does Lamb's PDA have to offer? Key's uh, command trailer is strangely peaceful. The crew of systems experts that formerly manned the multitude of terminals inside are nowhere to be found, and the omnipresent hum of a trailer's computer banks has fallen silent. The senior inspector glances up from her desk, half turning to face you. Good, you're here, I... The sentence trails to nothing as she squeezes her eyes shut, wincing. Her hand goes up to rub her temples. Ugh. Another headache, huh? Yeah, migraine. Oof, I hate migraines. I get them quite often. Same with sinus. Actually, more sinus headaches than migraines. But uh, but they they, for those who are wondering, migraines and sinus headaches, even though they're kind of different, they have the same results when it comes to like the type of headache. It's just because of the way sinuses slash allergies work. I get those quite regularly, especially at the place I work at. And I don't want to keep popping pills all the time, so it's like one of those things where you have to just kind of suffer through it. Mainly because it screws up your stomach if you keep popping pills all the time and uh, without eating and all that. Yeah, migraine. She rubs her temples with both with both hands. Feels like someone lit a fire behind my eyes. Nobody has as many headaches as you do. That drain still bothering you? That's one way of putting it. Feels like it's driving a railroad spike through my temple. She gives her head an agitated shake. That, the necklace I was wearing didn't help matters much. Damn thing masked my aura just fine, but it wasn't particularly easy to carry. Was it cursed or something? No, it's just hard to use. Like looking through lenses, ground to something else's prescription. It made the drain from spellcasting hurt more too. Truth is, I've been in constant pain for the past couple months. Cost of doing business, I guess. That way you've been so short-tempered? Well, some of that was just me, but the pain didn't help anyway. Any... I'm still recovering from the impact of wearing that thing for months on end. I sucked up some nasty drain breaking us out to that trap. I'm not 100% and I probably won't be for months. Meh. Suck it up, Key. We've got a job to do. Yeah, I know. I'm the one who's hauled you here, remembered? It's my fucking task force. She shakes her head to clear it, gritting her teeth and discovered. Okay, we got a job to do, so let's do it. Hang on, there are a couple other things I want to discuss with you before we get into this. She sighs, heavy, rubs the bridges of her nose. Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess I owe you some answers. Go ahead and say what you want. You've got my attention. Tell me about your magic. I need to know more about your capabilities before we enter the field again. What you saw in the tiger's is what you get. I can make you move faster. I can... Wait, where did you have the aim, uh, haste ability? Uh, anyway. Uh, I can make your aim better. I can reduce small groups of assholes to their component atoms. In a pinch, I'm a crack shot with my duty weapon. So we got that going for us, too. That's about it. That's what I can do. But like I said, I'm not operating at efficiency right now. Truth be told, I'm having trouble staying upright. I know the hit or drain like the last one and I'll be in trouble. Let's just make sure it doesn't come to that. There's something else I want to talk to you about. Go ahead and then... You keep secrets from Lamb. I want to make sure that you aren't keeping any more from me. If I had any more surprises in store, I'd have sprung them on you already. But I don't, Wiggles. I'm pissed off. I'm hurt. I'm tired. I'm scared to death of what's coming. All that I really want to do is lie down to sleep for a month. But that is an option either. You expected me to believe that? She rubs her temples again. Look, if I do anything that sets off any alarm bells for you, feel free to put a bullet in my head. I'm too hurt and I'm too tired to stop you. But for now, can't we just work together and get ourselves out of this situation? I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life on this boat. Alright, another question. Uh, I'm told, uh, you told Lan that you suspected Ku, but not him. Why? Because he was an idealist, a damn cheerleader, truth be told. He was always moralizing, going on about the standards that we need to hold for ourselves to. She grinds her teeth in aggravation. He used to harp on and on about transparency and accountability, and I thought we were supposed to serve the public first and the council second. I mean, it sounds reasonable. It was irritating as hell. I wanted to strangle the bastard sometimes, but I never doubted his sincerity. Alright, something else. Uh, you owe me an apology, Key. 
Her lips curl into a grimace. That's about the magical interrogation. I already told you that. I'm sorry about that. Sorry it doesn't cut it. You fucking tortured me, Key. Yeah, okay. So what exactly do you want me to do about it? I've already blown all my money and influence saving our lives. Apologies are all that I've got left to give at the moment. <clears throat> Bullshit. There must be something else that you can do to pay for what you did to me. Her voice hardens. You'll get to everything that you deserve and more. That much, I promise. You're going to walk away from this job with a reward that you can't even imagine. I've already cleared it with corporate. So swallow your grievances and pull out the PDA. Let me get to work. I'm ready when you are. Show me the PDA and we'll get to work. You fish out Lamb's PDA out of the evidence bag that Key had you put it in. The device is in bad shape. Its case warped and bent, but the screen winks out. It winks on as you command. Surprised it didn't get destroyed via her lightning blast. The display is streaked with Lamb's dried blood. It looks like red gelatin, thin and watery. You can just make out the text underneath. Browse the PDA's file system. Lamb and, uh, Lamb Andy secure a mailbox. Two in two in box, three out box, one live chat, twelve trash man, junk mail, six thousand three hundred forty. Search the inbox. Inbox. Mail package delivery. Mail standing orders. First message. Uh, from Ku Wallace to uh, Lamb Andy, package delivery. Everything is ready on our end. Now you need to hold up your end of the deal. The package has to be delivered before the wild card leaves the evidence room, or this whole thing is going to get messy. Ah, oh, the package, I guess. Makes me the what making me the wild card. She rolls her eyes. What an idiot! If he wanted to speak in code, he would. Just, he could have been a little less obvious about it. If things do get messy, it's your ass, Lamb. Crate wants us to go by the numbers, so that means both the package and the wild card are caught in the same trap. We can't chance the package catching a bullet before we question her. And a firefight in the hallway could raise questions. You know your you know your job. Do it well, and you get what you were promised. Coup. Who was the task force's magical interrogator, right? The pocket, the pockmark guy who worked for me over, <coughs> worked me over before you got to me. Yeah, now he's he's a mound of bloody ash decorated the floor of the tiger's in evidence room. Overall, I'd call that an improvement. All right, uh, second message: standing orders. Crate, Lamb Andy, standing orders. Mr. Lamb, much as I appreciate your concern for the citizens of Hong Kong, it's not your place to question my tactics. The behavior of the SDU is none of your concern. The changes that you hope to see will never come about while Mitsuhama is viewed favorably by the Executive Council. Our client wants to see a reputation tarnished and at a certain amount of heavy-handedness on our part is necessary to make that happen. It's all part of the plan, Senior Inspector. You do your job and let me do mine, Crate. All right, so that's where Crate and her people come into this. The massacre at the end of the Kowloon City riots, the police brutality that led to the riots in the first place, they were all intended to hurt Mitsuhama's PR. What's the end goal? What would anyone spend this much money to tank the reputation of their own police force? <coughs> Maybe Crate's clients want to scuttle the police, turn Hong Kong into an anarchist state like Berlin. She shakes her head, frowning. Maybe. Let's keep reading. Alright, so let's go to the next step. <clears throat> let's uh, search the outbox. Okay, I'm in. Uh, Lamb Andy to Ku Wallace. Okay, I'm in. Alright, Ku, I've reconsidered your proposal and I went in. You're right. Key is a lost cause. She's a corporate She's corporate to the bone and trying to argue with her is like talking to a brick wall. She doesn't give a damn about what the HKPF is supposed to stand for. All that matters to her is the company's bottom line. Ah, oh, fuck you, you little weasel. At least I don't turn on my own people for a paycheck. It's funny, I used to be such an idealist. I joined the HKPF because I wanted to help people, but that isn't what the organization is about, whatever the recruiters say. Good cops don't have a place in Mitsuhama's police force. The corporate culture of the HKP either char changes them if they're weak or chews them up if they're strong. Either way, they wind up broken, and I can't be a part of that machine anymore. The big change we're talking about is it's a chance to fix things. A real honest-to-God chance. And so as much as I hate your methods, I'm going to help you. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I want the HKP up to be better, and this is a chance to make that happen. A remote chance. Maybe it is, but better than nothing. Ooh. Well, that's just how the world works. You have a... If you're too idealistic, it's like Game of Thrones. You'll just get your head cut off because you you think of that way. So and he's talking himself up, trying to convince himself that he's doing the right thing. She nods mutely, her expression blank. Her eyes are fixed on the screen. Tell Crate I'm in. I can bring you a key and I can help you dismantle the task force. But you should know that if you're b bullshitting me, if things don't change for the better, I'm coming after you. You can count on that. Well, he's dead now. Yeah, tough talk. Think you could have backed it up. Lamp. No, not in a million years. The fool would have gotten himself killed one way or another. Still, we learned something here. Lamb was convinced that Crate and our people were working towards some a sort of shakeup in the HKPF. A big change. Ominous words. Yeah, they are. Let's keep reading. See what else we can turn up. All right, second message. Lamb Andy to Tong Irene. Justice. Irene, I know that you uh, you have every reason to hate the police, but hear me out. What happened to your family is wrong. I'm going to do everything I can to make it right. 
I can't bring you your husband back, but I can make sure that the constables who killed him pay for their crime. Big changes are coming, I promise. Would you then and now? Please allow me to cover your mortgage payments. I've recently come into a large sum of money, and I want you to have it. Consider it a show of good faith until you can bring you the justice that you deserve. Lamb. I don't know anything about this. She frowns. Must have been related to some old case of Lamb's from before he got assigned to the task force. Or maybe it was a personal thing, a friend of his, or a romantic interest. It was something that he cared about. That much is clear. Feels like a motive to me. This woman's husband died. Lamb felt guilty, and he signed on with Crate to try and make amends. Yeah, maybe. Grouping up with people who are responsible for the Coolant City riots, the massacres out of guilt, though? She shakes her head. What kind of ba ass-backward ass thinking is that? The kind that idealists and zealots have always used to justify their actions. Nothing new about it. This whole thing raises more questions than it answers. Let's keep going. There has to be more in here for us to find. Alright. Uh, third message. The message has been corrupted. A meaningless, a meaningless stream of garbled text fills the screen. And it was titled ZZXDSESE P004. Anyway, let's go back to mailbox. Uh, live chat folder. Uh, chat wiggles. Read the chat to exchange. Did you authorize a second mind probe of Boulder's shoulder while he was unconscious? I'm looking at the transcript of this interview and he insists that two majors were screwing around with his brain last night. No, I was against having him scanned in the first place, remember? Why would I give authorization for two different mains to poke around in his brain? I don't know, maybe you wanted two sets of findings to check against one another. I know that you have trust issues where magic is concerned. I didn't authorize anything, Lamb. Unless we have a second ma magical interrogator that I don't, uh, don't know about on the task force, I'm going to go ahead and guess that he's making it up. Yeah, it was because of her necklace that no one knew she was a mage. So what? You just want to dismiss this? You don't think it warrants further investigation? In a perfect world, I'd tell you to knock yourself out, but right now, in the world that we live in, there's no time for that. We're too close to Crate to go hunting for a mystery mage who or may or may not exist. Dot dot dot. The council doesn't want any more delays, Lamb. Neither does Miss Suhama, so drop in and do your job. I don't want to have to tell the corporate about this. Alright, Fee, you win for now, but this discussion isn't over. Yeah, Lamb, it is. Keep going, Wiggles. Let's see what else there is to see. Alright, nothing in the chat box, so let's go to the junk mail. Lamb's junk mail folder is packed to the gills with all manner of unsolicited messages, scam mails, advertisements from everything from illicit drugs to designer electronics, and countless pornographic images fill the screen. It'd take days to sort through all of this for anything useful, and searching by trial and error would likely expose the PDA to a whole host of nasty worms and viruses. Huh, remind me never to open up my own junk mail folder. Yeah, I just tend to clean it out and never even actually look at it. Uh, search the junk mail folder for tagged messages. Search, oh, uh, I'm trying to remember. Nope, nothing on that one. Let's see. Nope, nothing on that. How about crate? I'm trying to remember if there... I think there is something you can actually find in the junk folder, but I don't remember what the... What, what actual phrases you can actually use. I've never actually hacked the game uh, for that, so... Uh, how about say... Nope. Ray? Nope. How about... Uh, how about Duncan? Nope. Okay. Never mind. I, 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 you can't really get anything out of it anyway, but I'm just trying to remember. There probably is, but like I said, I don't recall. All right. Trash bin. A little digging reveals a file buried into the PDA's trash bin. Looks like Lamb intended to get rid of it, but before, but he died before he could get around to pulling the trigger on it. Read the file. From Kate to Lamb, Andy. Instructions. Next steps. Mr. Koo tells me you've accepted our offer. Welcome aboard. You've been, uh, you've been, once you deliver a key, report to me and you'll have, uh, relocated to the, t uh, Taipo facility. You'll be safe there. We'll have the location under 24 hour guard for obvious reasons. From there on out, all you, uh, you need to do is to keep your head down and count your money. You keep up your end and, and you're soon to be a very wealthy and influential man. Okay. If Crate's clients, whoever it is, has something worth guarding in Taipo, then that's what we need to check out next. Let's keep going. This is good intel, but we need to get everything out of this PD that we can. All right. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Like I said, even if you do find a thing for the trash bin, it's not like... And there's, as far as I'm aware, there's no achievements. And there might be some, like, Easter eggs or something like that, but I, like I said, I don't know. That's one of the few things... Well, I mean, it's not like I know 100% 100 about this game, but there are a few things I, I'm aware of. But, yeah, not everything, though. She accepts, the uh, she accepts the device, a grim expression on her face. Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe you're right. He turns the PD over in her hands and then flips off the device's power switch. The screen flickers and dies. She rubs her eyes, drawing her attention to the dark hollows underneath them. Oh, and if I do find something in between episodes, I'll just re-upload the 
a save file and just to find something. Like maybe I could have typed in typo and might have had something for all I know. Alright, so here's what we got. Crate and her people are working for someone powerful and rich. Probably a megacorp that we don't know who. They're trying to tank Mitsuhama's reputation with the executive council so they can bring about some kind of change inside the HKPF. And they've got a facility in Taipo, but they're keeping that under heavy guard. Sounds about right to me. That isn't much, is it? We don't even know who we're fighting against. Maybe the executive council can help? I mean, there, there is a, this is a gun pointed at their heads too, right? I don't think so. Like I told you before, my credibility is pretty low at this point. And I don't think that anyone on the council will likely stick its neck out without solid intel on what we're up against. I'll call them, but I can't make any promises. Go back to your boat, Wiggles. Talk to your team. I'll call you when I know more. Alright, I'll go talk to them. But anything, if, I, if I'm missing anything from what that trash bin, it's like, it's so minor that's not like, it, for story purposes, there's nothing that you're missing out on, so. Alright, nope. We know, but we know where we're going. Crate's client is a warehouse in Taipo that the SDU is guarding. That's not what I was hoping to hear. I don't like going into fight without knowing who I'm up against. We're trying to bring the executive council into it. They might be able to help. Somehow I dealt with it that easy, my friend. These things seldom are. But perhaps... Your PDA buzzes, cutting, uh, cutting him off. Key, answer the call. Key's face flickers into the PDA's view screen. She looks haggard, even more so than before. This call was a bust, Wiggles. I've got a... Uh, the call was a bust, Wiggles. I've got still got a few execs wanting to go bad for me. The rest have already written it off as a failure. Nobody's going to risk sparking off a core war against my say-so. And I can't even tell them who they'd be fighting up against. We're going to need a hell of a lot more than we've got if we're going to convince anyone to move on this. Eh, I figures we're on our own then. Yeah, it looks like that way. We're going to have to face whatever is at Taipo without any assistance or backup. It's either that or sit here on the barge for the foreseeable future. Key lets out a long sigh. Look, Wiggles, I told you that you and your team would be well compensated for helping me, but I never really specified exactly what your reward would be. I think that you should know. Eh... Uh, it, I'd better like what I'm about to hear, Key. Promises were made. I know, and I can still deliver on them, mostly. We'll start with the bad news. I can't put a monetary value on what your team will receive. That's it. We're done. I'm going to shoot you. Truth be told, I'm going to have to wrestle with corporate to get as much of anything. A lot of the cost of renting out the bent tank came out of what had been set up as your reward. Excuse me, what? <laughs> You'll still get paid, I promise you that. It just won't be enough to retire on. Nothing I can do about it. That's just the way it has to be. Gobbit crosses her arm across her chest, a disgusting look on her face. Yeah, sure it is. We never should have trusted. Q, uh, Quee cuts off, uh, cut, voice cuts in, talking over her. As, as for you, Wiggles, you're a different story. For you, I've got uh, something better than money. <laughs> There's nothing better than money. I beg to differ. I can get your sins restored, yours and Duncan's too. I can give you back your old li or give your old lives back. Holy shit! That's right. Imagine the doors that'll open for you. You can return to Seattle, pretend that none of this ever happened. Hell, you can do whatever you want. You can even do it completely above board. What I'm offering you is the freedom to make your own choices again. The same freedom that Crate and Josephine Sang and Kindly Chain took away from you. Anyway, I just wanted to know what was on the line before we headed out to Taipo. She rubs her eyes, stretches. I'm gonna go get my kit ready. I'd recommend that you do the same. Uh, we don't... Well, <laughs> that's kind of funny how it says there's literally... Uh, the, the, uh, like there's jobs I need to finish but you can't there's no other jobs to finish like they didn't even program any extra side quests when you hit the Ben Tang or whatever so it's like I mean maybe you could still do those jobs from Jomo at this point but I don't think so I think you have to do them before the, the Tiger's Den thing but anyway not just yet I want to explore the Ben Tang a little bit she frowns okay Wiggles do whatever you need to do I'll give you a chance to close my eyes for a few minutes if nothing else when you're finished go to Joma he'll sneak us into Taipo and make him finish this she begins to look away then seems to think better of it the camera f refocuses on her face oh and uh Wiggles your boss is rock that Kong that you took from Eddie Pang got broken in the move I found it about 50 pieces when we got there that was the whole point of the beginning of the game or beginning of this extended stuff it's in the wastebasket under my desk if you still want it but I can't imagine it's worth much more anymore sorry about that the video feed crackles and dies. Key's face rinks out, winks off the PDA, and the display goes dark. Well, that presents us with something of a conundrum, my friend. He takes a drag on a cigarette and slowly releases the smoke through his nostrils, crocheted pawing at the ground. If this payment goes through, your shadow running dates with this team are over. With the sin, you would be li uh, you would be a liability. You would perhaps remain a boy, but you still need to find a different line of work. A difficult decision. I'll put some thought into it. 
See that you do. For now, we have a job to prepare for. Kindly Chang wishes us to complete this task, and so we will, pay day or no. The conspiracy would pose a threat to the Yellow Lotus, I and mean, you cannot say with certainty whether it does or does or does or do not until we enter that warehouse in Taipo. Yeah, we got other priorities to handle first, but don't worry, we'll have the Taipo soon enough. Alright. Then everyone's gonna head off to their own thing, so let's uh, give them a quick chat, see what they have to say. Yeah, this is probably going to be another long episode because I want to go into Taipo in the next episode, so. And start the end game. Or, I guess, second end game, I guess. Raptor glances up from his workstation, eyebrow arching upward as he turns to face you. Under the desk, Koshe cli uh, clips its chassis on its, rec on its recognition. Well, my friend, our fortunes have undergone an interesting turn, have they not? I would not have thought to find myself cast out to sea, but here we are. Eh. Let's see. Maybe he's going back to the impound yard and getting swarmed by cops. Indeed, in, in point to fact, I'm rather enjoying the change of scenery. There's something soothing, almost meditative, in watching sea mines bob to the motion of the leaves. A relaxed smile spreads across his face. He asks him idly fishes a cigarette out of his breast pocket. They're really quite lovely, you know, like enormous sea urchins with shells of rusted iron, pregnant with destructive potential. <laughs> I'll give you this, Raptor. You have an interesting way of looking at the world. Yes, my friend, I suppose I do. He snatches a butane torch from the desk, flicks it on, and uh, whisks the, his cigarette through the flame. A, flame. a plum of gray smoke curls towards the ceiling. You'll forgive me if uh, for my flight's offense, young sir. How are you enjoying life on the bent tank? He pauses a moment, considering. Truthfully, I'd, I'd rather like it. She's a lovely old vessel and well suited to her role as a floating fortress. And you, how are you enjoying your, our new temporary home? Uh... The ship is a wreck, Raptor. I'm half surprised it's even still floating. I think that's what I find so appealing about her. She's a rusted hulk, yes, but Utama and her pirates have augmented her with new arms, armament, and components. And in doing so, they have elevated her in something more. In a way, the Benteng is, is an exemplar of the human condition. There is beauty to be found in that, yes? What do you think about the last round? We have, a we have a lead, and we're one step closer to being done with this foolishness. There are positive things, I should think. Lamb's betrayal is aggravating, but not surprising. Only a few will trust anyone on this task force. They they all suck uh, suckle from the corporate teeth. Still, our hit on the Tiger's Den was ultimately positive. Now we're uh, lashed to a pirate ship, enjoying the swell of the waves and the smell of salt in the air. A rather large improvement by anybody's standards. Now, do you have any other questions? I'll return to my work. Catch you later. All right. Yeah, it's always interesting to talk to Ractor, just because it was, you know, he's a psychopath, so. Kaichu is seated cross legged on the floor of his cabin, his swords unsheathed in front of him. An array of tools rests nearby, and the air is thick with the scent of clove oil. The tools inside a stack of small paper squares and several stones, a tiny metal pick, and a high-tech vice grip of some sort. He raises his hand in greeting as you enter. Pardon me if I do not stand, Wiggles. Fine as these swords may be, they require as much maintenance as any other weapon. Burrs to be sanded out, dents to be reformed, etc. The salt air here does the blades no favor. Please make yourself at home. What's the vice grip for? It's a diamond coated rebonder. It cannot replicate the de coate process that covers the blades, but it can patch spots with a diamond edge coating as worn away or become rough. The materials are rather expensive, as you may guess. Now, what may I do for you? What do you think about the last run? There's little for me to say. I was not there. Yeah, Kaiju doesn't get much, <laughs> weirdly enough. I guess maybe they didn't really have much for him to add to the conversation. It's hard to say. Oh well. If he, obviously, if you brought him on the run, he has a little extra to say. So, so for those who you know are watching and want to know what he says, maybe bring him on the run instead of uh, whoever I chose. Maybe do it on the easiest. It's better to ch if you're curious and you're not good at certain character builds. Maybe it's better to set him on easy mode, and that way you can bring whoever you want, so you don't have to worry about the details. So. You find Duncan pacing in a small room, his thoughts elsewhere, but his reverie breaks as soon as you approach him. He looks thankful for the distraction. What's up? What do you think about that last run? Duncan grits his teeth at the question. Lamb, that fucking traitor. For all the senior inspectors planning and big promises, this task force ended up getting boned just as badly as we usually do by our clients. Leaking information, switching sides, raising the stakes. I know that as runners, it's us versus everyone else, but at times like this, like these, when I really feel it, he opens and closes his hands as if trying to work uh, uh, all uh, to work all all the tension out of them. Like I said proofreading, man. Could have gone could have gotten another once over, uh, or used a you know a clip clipboard for all that. We might have lost our advantage, but that's never stopped us before. Yeah, and it won't stop us now. I just 
I need to vent. Thanks for listening, Pykel. We're balls deep in this now. No way out. I'm ready to change the subject. How about you? Gotta run. Later. They might be able to... They might have that extra conversation if you didn't talk to them during the... Uh, if you didn't do the side quests in, uh, in the other area or whatever. So they, they could have had extra dialogue, but... So, anyway. Hey, Isabel. Uh, I clicked on you. There we go. You sense a change in the environment. Immediately upon entering the room, seconds later it hits you. It's quiet in here. The usual drone of beeps, hums, and fans is conspicuously absent. Isabel leans up against a steel table, picking what looks like glass off of a warped circuit board. Her profile is illuminated with blue-green glow by the glowing green, glowing screen beside her. She looks up at you with heavy eyes. She speaks. Her tone is grave. So it all comes down to this. Uh, looks like it. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Her hand pauses and a piece of glass falls from between her fingers. She hesitates. She shuts down the circuit board. Try your best not to die, Wiggles. Uh, all this time together and you think I'm going to kick it now? You haven't learned to thank. I die on my terms. The little Decker rolls her eyes at your comment, but the corner of her mouth lifts into a smile. History would tend to agree. Point thinking, Wiggles. What do you think about that last run? Isabel's eyes are cold when she looks at you. A bitterness creeps into her voice when she speaks. We saw it coming. No... We should have seen it coming. Hell, with all our luck, it's a wonder that both Lamb and Keith didn't turn on us. Sure, we still have the company woman on our side, but things have gotten a lot more complicated. Just for once, I wish we could be one step ahead of our enemies. She takes her head, tosses her hands up in defeat. Oh, well, nothing but old news now. Only thing we can do is learn from it and move on. Any more questions? Yep, see you later. Yep, that's pretty much the last <coughs> little bit of dialogue from her. Uh, outside of the, the ending. You enter Gobbit's cabin to find her gulping something from a chipped plastic mug. As the mug's contents slash and churn, uh, churn a sharp antiseptic note uh, strings, stings your nostrils. She glances up from her drink and locks eyes with you. The pirates make this. It, I think it's like a kind of whiskey. She frowns down at the mug. I don't know what they make it from, but it tastes like salty turpentine. I thought that dry, uh, pirates drank rum. I probably do, but when there is any, I mean, I don't think that Tomer or people would choose this stuff over a bottle of rum or tequila or whatever. It's just that they make it here on the boat. She tilts the mug towards you invitingly. Kicks like a mule. You want some? Eh, uh, sure. Hit me with it. She hands you the mug. Then an the antiseptic odor hits you in the sinus again, bringing water to your eyes. It smells anything but appetizing. It doesn't look much better. Bottoms up. You tilt back the mug and fill your mouth with liquid. The flavor is repulsive. It's closer to an industrial solvent than a beverage, and your stomach tur turns as the fluid traces a grainy, fiery trail down your throat. Every bodily instinct that you possess urges you to spit it out to purge yourself of the horrible poison you've ingested. So, it, yeah, if you've got body six or willpower, you can you can fight it. If not, you spit it out. So, All right, willpower. Ignore your instincts and swallow the liquid. You fight your rebelling body and force yourself to keep the fluid down. A few seconds later, a pleasant warmth begins to radiate from your chest out through the tips of your fingers. The aftertaste is still vile, but the buzz is quite pleasant. Nicely done, killer. Ten points for style. She smiles at you. So what do you want to talk about? Go ahead and tell me. I'm all ears. What do you, about the, what do you think about the Bentang? It's a tricked out bars that doesn't go anywhere. That makes it a glorified raft. Think back to the last raft we spent a lot, a lot of time on. The sinking ship. Think of it Think of that shit that went down there. Remember the smell of the killing pit? The disease written rat monster that tried to eat us? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, well, we already know the answer to your question. It's not that I don't appreciate what the pirates are doing for us. Hell, I kind of like some of them. They're a fun group. I just prefer to go hang out on dry ground is all. Dry ground is all. Her knees flex as she adjusts a, su a sudden sway of the deck. A rogue wave. After a passage, she puts her hands on her hips and focuses on you. Anyway, what about you, killer? How are you enjoying the pirate life? <coughs> uh, so, <laughs> I do like the top option. Honestly, I kind of dig it. Yo-ho and all that. Her smile, her, her lips uh, lift into a smirk. The next time we're on shore, I'll make sure to find you a parrot. Something with a truly decadent plumage. And a big floppy hat, maybe. Something you could wear out, uh, as a brackish angle. As long as it has a white brown, the, bride here is, the rain here is brutal. Still getting used to that, huh? Me, I hardly even notice it anymore. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Change the subject. Surprise me. Last run? Yeah, I wasn't there, so uh, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I wanted I wanted to bring you, but uh, but you know, uh, Ractor and uh, 
the Raptor and Duncan had more use overall. I personally, but all right, well, that's it for our companions. Now we got our main objective, which is Tai Po. But what awaits us in Tai Po? Well, can we really fight this uh, this you know, police entity backed by mega corporations with uh, with Crate and Toe? Will our little band be able to work together and uh, force Crate into uh, an encounter in our own way? We'll find out next time as we do the final mission of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.